Dennis, good to see you again. How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm excited. It's been so much fun talking with everybody about this film. And it sounds like you guys had an absolute blast making it. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. It sounds pretty special. Now, actually, I want to start because I, I, I know everybody was excited to see the trailer when it first dropped just very recently, actually. And I read the comments on the trailer and a lot of them were about complimenting the fact that it didn't give anything away, that there were no spoilers. Everybody gets to go into this movie and not know how it is going to play out. And I want to hear from you who in your life is the person who keeps coming to you and asking what's going to happen in this movie. Are you going to make it out? Stuff like that. Do you share any of those secrets with people or do you keep them all to yourself? Uh, I keep them all to myself. <laughs> keep them all to myself. Everybody wants to know. And then they say, Oh, why didn't you tell me? You know, <laughs> so you asked. So I don't answer anymore. That's funny. Do you, do you, pay, you're no stranger to, uh, to titles, films, and TV that, that have plenty of anticipation and excitement from fans. There's comment sections, there's Twitter, there's access to opinions, uh, whether you want it or not. Do you pay much mind to that? Does it ever inform how you're going to portray something? Or do you always kind of try to block that out and do your thing the way you want to do it? I always do it the way I want to do it. Um, I don't let anybody, you know, because they don't know. You know, they're, they're not privy to the same information I'm privy to, um, you know, uh, and they're not working with the people I'm working with. They're not uh, engaging uh, with, uh, you know, uh, different, you know, uh, directors and, and actors uh, working each according to their gifts. Um, you have to stay in the moment with these things. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, you, you have people that are uninformed trying to inform people as to what they should like and not like based on what <laughs> everybody's an expert. Everybody's exactly. An expert. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you, you and Dale Dickey do really just such a good job establishing a tremendous chemistry that is part of a relationship that plays out in a sense that kind of makes the audience think you think, you know, somebody, and how much do you really know? And the evolution of that relationship is really good. Just for everybody in the film, actually, that happens between all of these characters. I mean, how much fun was it to get to set up those dynamics and then shoot it in order of the script and play it out with that evolution going on as it was written? Oh, it was a, it was a gift. It was a gift. And uh, it all starts with the, uh, the card game. And we spent a lot of time on that card game, you know, because everything, you know, we had these... Uh, I don't know if anybody's talked about it, but we had these uh, props people that would come and give us fresh decks set up. So, you know, the cards would come out the way, you know, uh, they should come out during the conversation. So we were actually playing the game as we were, you know, um, you know, uttering our lines. And it was just, you know, I mean, it was, that was one of my favorite parts of the movie is, is the game. And, uh, and indirectly actually sets up the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty, I didn't think about that, that the cards would actually have to be set to come out in a certain order. That's a nice touch. That's a good, a good. Yeah. So, I mean, so we were actually, you know, actually playing. And if you could have had a camera over the top of the table, you know, you just seen the cards come out like that. It was just, it was brilliant. Brilliant. That's yeah, uh, I love the the unique take. We talked about this in the press conference briefly, but you you bring a unique take to Ed with his Marines background, uh, and you and Danny Mar uh, Ramirez as Ash have a really great scene where Ed tries to almost put the fear of God in him for not showing respect when talking about a military veteran. Uh, I would love to, you know, like in your travels with the USO and in playing different versions of military characters in the past, what have you learned about that sequence and what, like how the respect that these people, these veterans command and deserve? Um, because I've seen it firsthand, you know, um, I've seen, I've seen people go out on patrol and I see how pensive and how frightened they are. And I saw the relief in their eyes and the smiles on their faces when they returned. So to see that and to understand that, and, these, and this is something that they do every day. And you know when they leave that fob, you know, uh, that 
they, they don't know if they're coming back. And when they do come back, man, it is such a release. And, uh, and I, I think I said this earlier that, you know, I've played a number of uh, military uh, characters and no two are alike. No two are alike. I mean, Ed is as far away from Jonas Blaine from the unit as you can get. And, uh, and they all have their flaws and their challenges and their uh, traumas. And, uh, and Ed is no different. Ed has some, uh, you know, uh, I tried to do it with a look or, you know, or, or the fact that I didn't look at anyone, um, you know, to sort of feel what that PTSD must be. You know, uh, I think I, you know, uh, what the best thing I can say is he's a warrior without a war. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, and I can feel it too. And you're in your portrayal of the character. You did such a good job with it, man. Yeah. Um, now, and that's, actually, how I, that's how I connect with Darby. Yeah. Know? You know, so that's, that's a, that's an interesting perspective, man. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I'm actually going to get a little bit lighter here. Uh, so I, I've interviewed John Cena and he's aware that like he is kind of become in his own sense of meme from his WWE days where no matter what the topic is, somebody's going to tell him you, that you're invisible. I can't see you. Have you had a similar experience for becoming so well known for saying you're in good hands where co-stars or people are coming up to you and they just kind of try to work it into something you're doing or anything like that? They always work, try to work something in. It all depends on what they like, you know, and, and what and what draws them to me and what their connection to me is, which is unbeknownst to me. I mean, I, I have nothing to do with it. It's all about what they feel and how they feel about something they've seen me in. So I get across the board all kinds of different approaches and uh, comments about things I've done. And you never know what's going to come out of their mouth. Most of the time it's going to be, you know, uh, you know, are you in good hands? You know, that kind of thing. But like I said, I've been, I've been so blessed and so grateful to have the roles and have played the roles that I've played that people are actually still talking about them. You know, the major leagues, Jonas Blaine's, the heats, the, you know, I mean, just, you know, all the things that I've, I've had such a, uh, you know, a pleasure of playing and that people want to talk about. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's just really, uh, it's endearing. Yeah. It's always awesome to follow the career, man. And I'm happy to see it continue on for you and see what's next after no exit. And actually, that's actually, I want to ask you, are you, have you ever been a, uh, a comic book fan at all? Do you have a geek side? Oh yeah. Who, who are some of the, if you don't mind indulging and showing your geek side here, who are some of the characters or comics you remember ever going to, and reading their books or the movies or TV shows you've enjoyed? Oh, geez. Ah, man. Well, you, you mentioned John Cena. I am a huge fan of Peacemaker. <laughs> it is so off the wall. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, and, and I've worked with John and, uh, and this is, this is some of the best work he's done to date. Um, I'm a big Mandalorian fan. Um, I mean, I, I love, uh, you know, uh, I've always wanted to play John Stewart. The um, oh really? Ah, there you go. And I mean, Grogu, and uh, and he chose he chose to go back to. Uh, I know. Oh, you're up to date. I love it. I love it. But I think it's going to come out that he's a full fledged Jedi, and uh, and he's he's not, and he's waiting to get up to get a hold of that uh, dark saber. Yeah, he just has to remember. He just has to remember. Oh man. Well, Hey, if, if I ever talk to the people over there at WB, I'm going to put in the John Stewart, uh, suggestion and let them. Oh uh, yes. Yeah. The green lantern, man. I, I think he's probably the most powerful, uh, superhero there is. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, and it, he's, he's due, he's due for, for some more, but man, I got to let you go. I got to wrap me up. And you know, he's former military as well. That's true. So you fit the bill. I'm, I'm already for you now. I'm going to start the campaign. Thank you so much for the time. I got to get out of here. Let's get to the next one. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you, man. Thank you so uh, much. Pleasure is mine.